like to call the Local Agency Formation Commission meeting to order. It's in the County of Kern, State of California. It's in the Bakersfield, or the Kern County Board of Ch Supervisors Chambers. And I would like to ask for roll call. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Thank you. Okay, could I ask Commissioner Fowler to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you. Approval of the minutes of the May 23rd, 2018 me meeting. I'll make the motion. Second. If I have this right, it was a motion made by Commissioner McGuire, seconded by Commissioner Couch. Correct. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, we'll go to noticed public hearings. Public project review, A, Kern Tulare Water District, sphere of influence amendment. Commissioner, or excuse me, Director Knox. <laughs> uh, to the chair, with your permission, I'd like to handle uh, items A, B, and C with an overview first, but then go into the specifics and go to the, each of the in, in individual votes because they're all part of the same, same project. Okay. Uh, we received Kern Tulare Water District's annexation number six with the sphere amendment on October 9th, 2017 and annexation number seven on January 25th of 18. Uh, but Mr. Rice and I have known about this project for much longer than this and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, as many of you know, before I went to work for LAFCO, I worked for the petroleum industry several years ago when we were at the height of the drought. Uh, specific oil fields had uh, water resources that could be, could, be, could be put into good use. Uh, it was a time to see if there were opportunities in the oil field produced water could be used elsewhere. Uh, most people don't know this, but when oil is pumped out of the ground, mostly what is brought up is water. In some cases, as much as 97% water. So they're, they're, the joke is there are water companies that produce a little bit of oil. If you see those tanks out in the field, what those tanks are for is for separating out the water from the oil. That's what that's the issue, the, what they're designed for. Um, so there's water left over. Some of the water is used in the field, uh, cleaned up and used as steam or water flood, but some water is, is made available. Um, Chevron has been sending water to the, uh, from the Kern River water field to the Coelho Water District to be blended with some of their other water and used in agriculture, and they've been doing this for 20 years. So this isn't a new idea. Uh, so at this point, I got a bunch of people together and set a meeting between the ge geology, de geology department at CSUB, uh, several agricultural water districts, and oil producers from the east side of the valley. Several projects came out of that meeting, including one between California Resources Corporation, formerly known as Oxy, here in California, and North Kern Water District. Uh, this is another project. Several oil producers have agreed to send water to Kern Tulare Water District Annexation 7 uh, will be the site for a water reservoir. The water will be delivered year-round, but farmers need uh, the water mostly in the summer months. The reservoir will be, use, be used to blend water and deliver to farming operations in the district. During the winter months, when there isn't a lot of ir irrigation going on, the water will be stored in the reservoir. Uh, the design of the reservoir and the, and the piping to, to, from the oil fields to the reservoir 
uh, all need to be engineered. And at that time, it landed on Mr. Rice's desk when he was working for a local engineering firm. That's how he knew about this project. Um, annexation number six is a property farmed by a company that also produces oil. The company will be sending their oil field produced water to Kern Tulare Water District, have it blended with other sources, and receive a portion of it back to use as part of his farming operation. So this project is a win, win, win. The oil pr producer is paid for the excess water. The district gets to expand their reserves of water, and the farmers will get reliable source of water at a reasonable price. Uh, for Mr. Rice and myself, this has been a fun and interesting project. Uh, as we've had come before LAFCO. So that's the background. Let me get into the specifics on each of the agenda items. Item A is Kern Tulare Water District uh, Sphere of Inf Influence Amendment. Consideration of the proposed, proposed Sphere of Influence for Kern Tulare Water District. This was handled by a, an environmental impact report to meet the CEQA requirements. Uh, that has been prepared and adopted by the district. And this Sphere Amendment uh, covers both Annexation 6 and Annexation 7. It is my recommendation uh, to consider the environmental impact report, waive notice hearing and protest hearing, and approve the sphere amendment conditional on the approval of Annexation 6 and 7. Thank you. Okay, do we have any comments from the public on the Kern Tulare Water District Sphere of Influence Amendment. Commissioners, any questions, comments? I'll move the staff recommendation. Second. Okay, that was a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. Go to item B, Kern Tulare Water District, annexation number six. Thank you, Chair. This is the property where the agricultural crop is currently being grown and will continue to, to receive water. Uh, for your consideration, this proposed annexation of, of approximately 17 acres into the Kern Tulare Water District. The proposed area is generally located one-fourth mile west of Highway 65 and one-fourth mile to the south of Garces Highway. An EIR has been adopted by the Kern Tulare Water District. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested notice and hearing and protest hearing be waived. If approved, the proposal is subject to uh, conditions recommended by the executive officer. Uh, the district has uh, signed an indemnification agreement. There will be no tax rate, net, no tax uh, increase by this project. This, this is zoned agriculture and will remain in agriculture. Uh, it is consistent with the general plan, the tra regional transportation plan and specific plan. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. This does not conform to uh, the assessor's parcels. This annexation splits a parcel, but because there will be funding completely on fees and not on taxes, there is no tax consequence. Uh, there is no functional overlap with other, other districts, uh, and uh, there is an adequate water supply, and as, as mentioned before, this actually is gonna increase the water supply for the area. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notice to affected agencies in any notices and public publications required. This has 100% landowner consent, and the district has requested notice and hearing protests be waived. So it's my recommendation that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1714. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the Kern Tulare Water District Annexation Number Six? Commissioners, comments? Move approval. Second. Got, got a motion from Commissioner Couch, a second from Commissioner Sanders. Cast your vote. Motion 
Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we'll go to C, Kern Tulare Water District, annexation number seven. This is the property where the agricultural uh, reservoir will be constructed. Uh, for your consideration of this proposed annexation of approximately 40 acres into the Kern Tulare Water District, the area is generally located on the northwest corner of Highway 65 and Hart Avenue. The environmental impact report has been adopted by the Kern Tulare Water District. Uh, if approved, the proposed uh, is subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Uh, they have signed an uh, ind indemnification agreement. There is no tax increase. It is zoned agriculture and will remain agriculture as a reservoir um, for agricultural purposes. It is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms to the assessor's parcel. There is no functional overlap. And again, adequate water supply. This will supply more water. Uh, uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. It is my recommendation the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice hearing and protest hearing and approve annexation 1719. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public like to speak on the top item, Kern Tulare Dis Water District annexation number seven? Commissioners? Motion on the recommendation. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your votes. Did it get in? My, my other finger hit the wrong thing. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. Item D, Tahon Castaic Water District Annexation Number 6. Mr. Knox. Yes. For your, for your consideration is Tahon Castaic Water District's application to annex approximately 10,116 acres. The pro proposed area is generally located between the two areas the district currently serves. Uh, they're shown on the, on the map there in red. Um, a grapevine specific and community plan environmental impact report has been adopted by the Tahone Castaic Water District. This proposal has 100% landowner consent as it's all owned by Tahone Ranch. Uh, applicant has requested notice and hearing and protest hearing be waived. Uh, this project uh, has had an indemnification agreement uh, uh, signed. There is no tax increase. Uh, when it comes to zoning, this project does not con uh, convert prime agricultural land as defined by government code 56016. Any commercial agricultural commodities contained in the annexation will continue to pr uh, be produced with no changes to production or operation. There are several Williamson Act agreements within this annexation. There is no intent to cancel these contracts. This, this, this application is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. It's consistent with commission policies. The assessor's parcel, uh, the boundary of this proposed annexation does not conform to assessor, assessor parcels. This area, having been a Spanish land grant, does not encode, is not encoded in the tax rate area system. Therefore, its boundaries will have no impact on existing parcels or tax rate areas. There is, there is no functional overlap with other districts. Uh, there is an adequate uh, water supply. The plan for services is included in your packet. Uh, affected, uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. It is recommended that commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. We have notice hearing and protest hearing and approve annexation number 1720. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the Castake, the Tahoe Castaic Water District annexation number six? Commissioners, comments? I'll move approval. 
Second. I've got a motion. I need a second. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Motion approved. All ayes. Okay, we will now go to item E, North of the River Sanitation District, Annexation Number 110. Mr. Knox? Yes. This proposed annexation consists of approximately 31.48 acres into the north of, San north of the River Sanitation District. The proposed area is generally located in the northwest corner of Snow Road and Callaway Drive. A negative declaration has been adopted by the North of the River Sanitation District to meet the CEQA requirements. Proposal has 100% landowner consent. Uh, there has been an identification agreement signed. There is no tax uh, increase associated with this. For zoning, this area has been planned for, for in the county's general plan. The land use plan designation is general commercial uh, and suburban residential. It is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans, or specific plan and is consistent with commission policies. When it comes to land, ag land conversion, this proposal converts a portion of the annexation from prime agricultural lands as defined by government code section 56016. The property currently does not produce any agricultural commodity. None of the property within the, is, is within the Williamson Act and this project is in the path of development with residential development contiguous to this area. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap with other districts. Water usage will likely increase when the property is developed sometime in the future. Water us usage will be evaluated at that time. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts are notified and no comments were provided. It is recommended that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing and protest hearing, and approve the annexation number 1721. Thank you. Do I have anyone from the public who would like to address the North of the River Sanitation District annexa annexation number 110? Commissioners? Motion to approve. Second. I think that was a motion by Commissioner McGuire, second by Commissioner Couch. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Yes. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, oh. the, the next item is, uh, relates to my client, so I'm gonna recuse myself and leave the room. Thank you. The next item is City of Wasco, extension of services outside the boundary. Mr. Knox. This is proceeding 1723 for your consideration, the proposed extension of services outside the city of Wasco's boundaries, but within the city's sphere of influence. This property is a, is a residence located at the northwest corner of Griffith Avenue and McCombs Road. Water service is requested to be extended to one parcel due to a loss of a water well. The, the city actually has a water line running right in front of the property. Uh, to meet CEQA, notice of exemption has been pre prepared and adopted by the City of Wasco. The extension of services application meets all the requirements of the cortese knox Hertzberg Act of 2000. It is my recommendation that Commission consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant. We have notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve extension of service boundaries, proceeding number 1723. Thank you. Is this the property that the owner said when and if the city goes out, they will be annexed? Yeah, the city has no plans to annex in that area uh, currently, but once uh, growth does move out to that, they have agreed to be part of that annexation, yes. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone in the room who would like to speak to the city of Wasco, extension of services outside boundary for this one parcel getting a water? It's warm out there. <laughs> Commissioners. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner McGuire, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. 
Okay, commission items. General business. A, approval of claims list number 1806. We need a vote for that, commissioners. Motion. Second. Is that you, David? Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Fowler, a second by Commissioner Couch. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Item B, update, Special District Commissioner appointment. Mr. Knox? Yes, this is an update from an item that's been going on for a couple of meetings now. After not receiving a quorum in our initial request for votes, we were able to get a quorum with the extension of 30 days. Recently, I sat down with Tim Ruiz with the East Niles uh, Community Service District, who's also chair of the Kern County Special Districts Association, and we counted the votes. In a close race, Commissioner Sanders was reelected for another four-year term. Uh, congratulations, Commissioner Sanders. We, uh, in addition, we have a significant number of districts opt in to holding elections electronically. We will provide electronic ballots to those who asked and continued with a slow and tedious pro process of paper slow mail ballots for the rest. Thank you. General business item C, contract for legal services. Madam Chair, <laughs> both this item and the next item which is a client of mine, uh, relate to me, and I'm going to recuse myself on both of them. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Okay, contract for legal services, yes. Mr. Knox. Yeah, Mr. Schroeder has been counsel to Colonel Lafco since 1990. Uh, recently went looking for a copy of the contract, and neither one of us could find a copy of, of our contract with him. Even if we did find it, it would be significantly old at this point, so we decided it's probably best if we came up with a new contract. Uh, Mr. Schroeder presented me with a new draft. I sent it over to our backup or alternate counsel, which is Joe Hughes. He reviewed and make revisions, which were accepted by Mr. Schroeder. The draft continues the same fee schedule as we have been using for several years. You as the commission technically hire counsel and with that, it's your requirement that you vote for on its contract. Uh, as we're uh, my recommendation that you approve the contract. Thank you. Does the public, do I need to offer this out for the public? Sure. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the item of the legal contract for Mr. Schroeder? Commissioners? Motion to approve. We have comment. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Um, I'd like to just say I appreciate Mr. Schroeder's service to LAFCO for so many years and his very low hourly rate. Wow. <laughs> However, there is some language that I'd like to change to make it a little bit more specific under point two uh, where it says... Um, Attorneys shall notify LAFCO in writing. Oh, I'm sorry, the previous line. Attorney's rate may be supplemental or supplemented or revised by attorney from time to time, but any revised rate will not be retroactively applied. From time to time doesn't sound like a metric that's particularly restrictive. It doesn't sound, I think we need to uh, adjust that. Uh, and he has rarely raised his rates, so I'm not concerned about that. I just think the contract needs a little bit more specificity. Chair, with your permission, I think uh, a language could be, you know, upon approval of the commission and take out the time to time and we would have exactly what you're looking for. Okay. So he would bring, if he wanted a rate increase, he would bring it before the commission, you as a commission would vote, vote on that. Okay. And, and he's agreed to that. <laughs> that language. So that would take time to time out? Correct. Okay. And put approval by the commission in. Oh, okay. Would that be satisfactory? Oh, it still is kind of mushy. Um, yearly or um, something. I, I don't know what the other commissioners think. Can 
Can I speak to that? I'm okay, I'm okay with the contract. I think his intent of saying from time to time was, I don't think that precluded us from saying we don't approve of the rate he's going to charge us, therefore we can, because we can terminate it whenever we want. Correct. Mm -hmm. So your intent here is to just get a contract in place. There may be one in place, but no one can find it. Um, so for, from time to time, if we want to take that out and, and include, if that makes us uh, more comfortable with upon approval by the commission, I think, and he's agreeable to that, then I'm okay with that. But I don't know that we need to do it every year because we have a contract with him okay. until we say we don't have a contract with you. Correct. There's you, no end date on the contract. No. Right. Any, any, <coughs> that, uh, that works for me. Any, when, any Thursday or any Wednesday night or whatever the fourth, <laughs> Thursday, fourth Wednesday of the month is right. the end of his contract can be. So are you okay with the That satisfies the me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is that, a, is that a motion? Yes, I'll also move. Second. Okay, so with the correction from time to time to approval of the commission, we have a motion by Commissioner Fowler, a second by Commissioner Couch, cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, general business D, response to grand jury on report of Lost Hills Utility District. This is an informational item, Mr. Correct. Knox. Correct. The grand jury released a report on Lost Hills Utility District rec uh, recommending several changes to the district. Most of these recommendations are not relevant to LAFCO. What was relevant was a discussion about the possible conflict of interest with Mr. Schroeder count being counseled to both LAFCO and the utility district. I take the integrity of the commission very seriously and feel that the record needs to be set straight in regards to our conflict of interest policy here at LAFCO. Mr. Schroeder recuses himself whenever there's a conflict of, of interest, which he's doing actually right now. Um, and, and, and typically recuses himself and, and, and leaves the room so he doesn't have any influence. Um, we also have a backup attorney when necessary. That's Joe Hughes, who actually just uh, reviewed the contract that you just approved. Um, the letter I submitted to the grand jury was included in your packet along with uh, the, the jury's report and references so that you know exactly what what was said by, on their part and on, on ours. We also have a conflict of interest policy. It's the Form 700s that you fill out every year to, to make sure that we know that uh, you don't have a conflict. I sign the same 700 form, so does our attorney. So we know what, who, our client, who his clients are, who he has potentially a conflict of interest with. And so we, we review that. Actually, that gets reviewed again later this year. Um, this is an informational item and the letter has already been sent by myself. I didn't feel like it needed to bring it to the commission for your approval before I sent it. I think, think it was pretty self-evident that just need to explain what we do, so. Right, thank you. Okay, we have government to government software. Another informational item, Mr. Yes. Knox. Your staff continually continues to look for ways to improve our process to increase accuracy and streamline the applications. After the uh, commission meets and votes on an application, there are several more steps that must be uh, accomplished before an application is deemed complete. This includes informing the Board of Equalization and recording with the county. We have already split up the time with the Board of Equalization by submitting electronically. Traditionally, we have sent a, a paper copy to the county and it takes anywhere from two weeks from a week to two months of processing time. There is a better and faster way. The county has a program called Government to Government or G to G to G. With this program, we can submit for recordation electronically and have the application process in 24 to 48 hours. There are specific standard which includes a dedicated standalone computer and certain hardware and software requirements. 
Through his connections, Mr. Rice has procured a computer from KernCog for free. Uh, with some modifications and an update to Windows 10, we can use this computer without much ad additional expense. Uh, we hope by making these changes, the only holdup will be receiving the final check from the applicant. Uh, so that's, that's good news on our part, something I very much appreciate the work that, that Mr. Rice has done to, to get that put together. So we're making it faster and, and, and uh, more streamlined for everyone, including the county. Right. Okay. F. ESRI GIS software purchase. Mr. Yes. Knox. Hiring a Mr. Rice as a senior analyst brought additional technical expertise to LAFCO. He has been our GIS person for years uh, on a contract basis. What it didn't bring when he became an employee was access to his GIS software when he stopped being a third party contractor to us. To utilize his talents, he needs the tools to analyze applications and ensure that the applications you are voting on are accurate. Mr. Rice was able to show you a small portion of the GIS capabilities at the workshop we put, up, put together in October. You, you know, the one that was precluded by the World Series. <laughs> The software comes in various packages, each with additional tools used to enhance the ability to, to gather, use, and disseminate information quickly. What we're asking for is not the Cadillac model, uh, which is several thousand dollars more. It is also not the basic Chevy model either. It's kind of like a nice Buick. It's kind of in the middle. Um, the software is relatively expensive at just under $6,000. The time savings it will bring and the accuracy of applications you receive, I believe it's worth the additional uh, expense. It also includes training, which uh, Mr. Rice will attend in, here in a couple weeks, and IT support. I still have money in this year's budget to pay for this program, and we can purchase it tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Rice, do you have anything you would like to add? I was just going to give you a somewhat idea of what the difference is between the license that we have now and what we are looking at. And uh, annexation number six for Tohon Cast Steak is a very good example. The legal description to plot that was 36 pages long. Uh, it took me around 40 hours to get all of that completely plotted, make sure all the research and everything was done. With the new one, it would take about four hours. So it gives me a lot more bulk items and the uh, ability to put the items in a lot faster. So just some new tools. So, and we've used them before with my license. And now I'm feeling a little left out. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be nice to have it back. <laughs> For reference, we're gonna have another one coming from, from Tahoe Castaic, which is three times larger in size, it's almost 40,000 acres. So to plot that will take even more considerable time. So you can see where this is going to, to over time, pay, pay for itself. Uh, with that, is my recommendation to approve expenditure uh, above my spending threshold for this additional software. Okay, thank you. Any comments, commissioners? Yes, Ms. Commissioner Fowler. Yes, this is to Blair. Um, is this a one-time expense? And if so, how frequently do we have to upgrade with the new technology? This is a yearly license. A so yearly we're gonna be license. coming back with this every year, oh. yes. At $6,000 each time, or more. No. I, don't, I don't see it going down, no. It does go down a little bit. It does go down yeah, a little there, bit? There's, uh, this is the initial program. <laughs> Uh, after the initial program, there will be a maintenance, and the maintenance will go down uh, to around $2,000. It actually says 1500 but it could go up to 2000 over the next year or so, is some of the, the scuttlebutt that I've heard. So, <laughs> so that's what we're looking at right now. Okay. I move approval. Second. Okay, I have a, a motion by Commissioner Fowler, a second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, general business item G, out of boundary services authorization. Mr. Knox? Yes. 
Earlier in the meeting, you voted for an out of boundary service request for health and safety concerns. We have see been seeing more of these requests ex and expect to see more. We originally were gonna have two additional requests on today's agenda, but the applicant decided that we'll just submit directly for annexation because it doesn't take that much longer. For those in need of safe drinking water, any delay is difficult. Our process here can take up to two months to get to you as a commission, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. The cortese knox Hertzberg Act allows the commission to get, delegate the, to the executive officer the authority to approve out of boundary service requests when there's a health and safety concern. From my point of view, I'm not particularly interested in having more power. I'm happy running the commission and bringing items for you to vote on. Uh, if I look at it from the property owner's perspective that just lost a well, and if they knew that there was a city line right outside their property that could be hooked up in a couple of days, but are told it's gonna to be two months or more, I would not be happy. Um, and there's a situation where they might continue to use a, a failed well that may have contaminants in it, be forced to do that. That's not good for any of us. Um, so while I don't, like I said, don't likely wanna take um, a voting away from you as a commission, I think this is an item where um, getting it done quickly with some speed um, is justified. Uh, also wanna point out that um, Uh, if the, if the, with the authority to do this, I will inform the, the chairman immediately of my decision. Um, I will bring this to the commission at the next hearing, uh, next available meeting, and um, the applicant, if they don't like my decision, has the ability to come to you uh, um, to get it overturned if they don't, if they don't like my decision. So it's my recommendation to approve the executive officer's authority to approve out of boundary extension request for health and safety reasons. Comments, commissioners? Do you need, if you need to go to the public, you can do that. Otherwise, I'll move approval. Would either of those in the public like to speak to this item? <laughs> <laughs> they are not moving. So it sounds like we've got a motion by Commissioner Couch, a Sec second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. General business item H, flexible hourly staff schedules. Yes. Mr. Knox. Both Ms. Munoz and Mr. Rice have requested a flexible work schedule, or what is commonly known as a 980 schedule. Instead of working 80 hours over 10, day, 10 days of a two week uh, pay period, they work slightly longer days and put in 80 hours over nine days and take every other Friday off. This schedule has become more common in the workplace in recent years. And for LAFCO purposes, it's more about the quality of work rather than, rather than, rather than when they put the time in. And we really don't have a whole lot of walk-in business that requires them to be there on a Friday. Um, the issue is that with this schedule, the employee puts in more than 40 hours in one work week, which triggers overtime, which is also which is unnecessary and something we want to avoid. There is a fix. Instead of ending the work week at Friday at midnight, which is what we currently do, the work week ends at Friday at noon. That way, half the hours are in one work week for a Friday and half the hours are in the next. That balances it out, and so you end up with 40 hours in each week. Um, there's also places within our handbook that references a 40-hour work week and eight-hour work days that needs to be revised as well. This may seem like a simple fix, but frankly, California employment law scares me a little bit. Uh, therefore, I would like to work with our contract HR company, PAS and Associates, associates to update our handbook to meet California law in this area. So it's my recommendation that you direct the executive officer to consult with PAS and associates, associates to modify the employee handbook to ensure compliance with employment law for flexible employee work schedules. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to address this item? Commissioners? Oh, 
but we're nothing if we're not flexible. So <laughs> I move your recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Sanders. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. And just so you know, I actually have them alternating. So there's always one of them. They alternate Fridays. So I always have company. <laughs> yeah, somebody to watch my, <laughs> to watch me. That's exactly right. Okay, general business item I, auditor services request for proposal. So it's yes. an informational item, Mr. Knox. Yes. We're at the end of a three-year contract with the accounting firm that has our bookkeeping. I contacted the chair and we agreed that now is a good time to put out a request for proposal and see if we get the best services for our auditing needs. Included in your packet is a copy of the request for proposal that was sent to local accounting firms that have expertise in government auditing. After the, July, the deadline of July 15th, I will bring these RFPs back to the commission for your decision on a contract to perform one, one audit with a possible extension to three. That's the way the contract uh, has been set up in the past, and I think that's a good way of doing it. So we're not necessarily, we've asked the same accounting firm to reapply to no, no, another RFP, but also put out to other ones. Okay. So just so you know, that's coming back to you here in, in probably the next meeting. Thank you. General business item J, Calafco board nominations. Informational item, Mr. Knox. Yes, Calafco will be holding board elections at its annual conference coming up. Uh, there are positions open for a county supervisor and one for a special districts. If you're interested in running, uh, the information is included in your packet. Uh, please let me know because I can start working on a success successful campaign for you. <laughs> <laughs> They're jumping for joy. I, I can tell LAFCO that I informed my commission that they, those are available, yes. Correct. General business item K, Cal LAFCO conference. Yes, this year's conference is being held at Tenaya Lodge in Yosemite on October 3rd through 5th. This is a lot more fun, actually. Uh, in your agenda uh, has information on the conference. If you're interested in attending, please contact Gianna at our office and she will help you through the process. We have already reserved a number of rooms, but they are first, some, first, first come, first serve. So make your wishes known now, or as soon as you can. Uh, should, be a, should be a wonderful place to hold a, hold a conference. I have attended a conference there in the past, and it's beautiful. Yes. And you do learn something, at least one thing. Um, general Business L, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. You're up again. We're going to do this in less than an hour. I'm impressed. Uh, I told you I have a baseball game at 7. I, I'm getting you there. <laughs> uh, for, I would start with an update of legislation. Uh, they're in the thick of things in Sacramento right now. AB 2258 is a bill that we've talked about before. It's a Cal AFCO sponsored bill that requests funding for dissolution of reorganizations of districts. It brings funding to local LAFCO so that they can do that. Uh, the State Controller's Office has been calling and asking about dissolutions on in inactive districts, and the Little Hoover Commission made recommendations to reduce the number of special districts across the state. Out of those recommendations came this bill. The, the bill provides $2 million in funding for LAFCOs to, to dissolve and reorganize special districts, especially districts that have been in inactive. I mentioned at the last meeting that there had been some pushback on the bill coming from our friends of the California Special Districts Association. Those have been resolved. We are, uh, there were attempts made by committee staff to tie the funding to municipal service reviews, to SB uh, 375 compliance, and, and also to take away the ability to fund the special studies needs uh, to complete the dissolution process, which is actually the biggest expense of doing the dissolution is the special um, study. Uh, all those were fought off and they are not in the bill, which has been a terrific job by CalAFCO uh, getting those out of the bill. One, one amendment that did make it into the bill was that the di districts with disadvantaged unincorporated communities would get first shot at the funding. 
uh, during the first two years of the grant proce process. After that, it's open to everyone. I look at the districts that we're working on and I can, I can make it work with having a disadvantaged unincorporated community in some of those areas. So uh, we can apply for funds uh, uh, right away. As soon as the bill passes, get signed. The bill has now passed both the Assembly and the Senate and is heading to the Appropriations Committee. Amendments to the bill we made in this committee to add the funding, the funding portion, the $2 million. We had hoped that the funding would have been in the budget bill, but it was left out. Uh, a very good sign that this will likely pass and get signed was a recent inclusion of Senator Hertzberg as a co-author on the bill. So that's a good, he's Mr. Lafko in Sacramento, so that's a good, good sign for all of us. Uh, there's another bill, it's the, our omnibus bill that gives kind of the technical changes that Cal LAFCO and our LAFCOs asked for within the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. Uh, that has passed the Senate floor and is now getting ready to go to the governor's signatures. So that's another good sign. Uh, in your agenda, you may have noticed something new, which is the resolutions. You probably haven't seen those. Um, Mr. Rice and I sat there and go, why aren't there resolutions in our agendas? Because we both worked for, having worked for the county, having worked for the city, we're used to seeing those. And so we asked Mr. Schroeder, should we really be including those? He goes, I didn't know they weren't included. <laughs> so we've started including them now. So you actually see the language of what, if, you, you know, if it's approved, uh, what that language would look like before you approve it. And if there are modifications, you can make it from the dais and we will include that in, in, in the resolutions. So you now have that information, um, including your agenda, and that'll be going forward. We'll continue to do that. I wanna make a comment about mailed agendas. This event agenda was very large. It took all three of us several days to get all the paperwork put together in a package to send this to you in the mail. That's a lot of time and energy that could be used on something else. I brought this up before in the past. Sending it to you electronically is a lot cheaper, it's a lot faster. So if any of you would be interested in opting out of getting a paper, we would very much appreciate it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Contact me when you, when you feel like you would like to. Um, Sorry, maybe I should, maybe I say that out loud? Why don't you just tell us we have to? My understanding is this was brought before the commission before and you rejected it. So in order to unreject it, you would have to approve. I don't remember that, but don't we all, did LAFCO provide everybody with a laptop or a iPad? No. Well, you're the only entity that did not. I mean, or I got one from the county, one from the air district, one from Kern Cog, one, everybody was handing them out, so. So you should have plenty. I have plenty of them. <laughs> um, I can share them. Um, does anybody have an issue with that, with, with receiving it electronically? We do receive it electronically. That's what I thought. We, we do. And I have no objection to that, except I'd like the agenda mailed to me so I don't have to print it out, but I'm reading, I can read all the documents online, no problem. But that should be a, just a quickie 45 cent deal. Sure. Just the agenda part? Um, I think so. Okay. okay. The maps are all legible. We can call you if we have questions. I noticed how much you spend each time to mail that big 250 pages, it's substantial. So I, I have but, no objection. It's, it's the staff time that's actually costing you. We're expensive. Okay. <laughs> I prefer it in hand so that when I have to uh -huh. take my now husband to the doctor, I sit in the waiting room waiting, reading the packet. That's where I sat yesterday, reading part of the packet. So I'm probably the oddball because I don't have one of David's Commissioner Couch's laptops. They're cheap. You could. I bet you they could, for the cost of saving the postage and everything else. There you go. The difference between a laptop and the price of. Would Would you like an iPad? Yeah. I don't know if I do or not. Tell you the truth. 
I agree that I want the paper in my hand as long as I can get it because I'm not computer literate. I don't work on that thing. I have a beautiful wife that does, but that's a lot of paper to go through. And for me, as slow as I read, the month is not long enough. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I have a suggestion. For those who want to have a paper copy, can they not just come by the office and pick it up? I have offered to do that. Sure. I'll even put it together for me. Is that an acceptable compromise? But I got to tell you, I'm not the most tech savvy individual in the world. And there aren't even any instructions that come with an iPad. They're, it's that intuitive. You just. Don't bet on you it. go like you go like this to, to move the page. There's nothing. There's nothing like you do with a book. You can do it, Ms. Madam Chairman. Can I ask another question? I need your permission. Are you going to make a motion? Maybe. Do you have sufficient direction? Right now, that's my question. I, I do, and this okay. is actually put on the agenda as an informational item, but this is enough. That, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, next item, um, our accounting firm, uh, Chanel Baker, last year requested a rate increase for their services. This was done right after we had passed our budget, and I complained to them. Uh, and, they real, and they held off for a year, but now they're back and they would like a rate increase. Uh, it's gonna be about an additional $1,000 over, over the year, which will take it from 12,000 to about $13,000 a year. Um, this was included in the professional and services category in the budget you passed in April, so I can absorb this in, as part of the budget. Uh, I'm telling you now because I'm gonna sign the engagement letters with them soon, so let you know that that's additional expense. Uh, some of you who have been on the commission for a considerable amount of time may remember Juliet Granger, who used to do our bookkeeping. Uh, for the last several years, uh, she has been handling our health reimbursement accounts. She informed me yesterday that she no longer would like to do that. So we're now gonna have to go and look for someone to do that. If anybody has an idea, um, of who would be good to do those kind of things, uh, please let me know. Uh, I don't have anybody off the top of my head. We could probably get our accounting firm to do it for us, but that's gonna be probably considerably more expensive than, it will definitely be more expensive than <coughs> Mrs. Granger. And the last item, uh, we are dark in July. It's one of the reasons this agenda was so large, but we're gonna have also have a very large agenda in August. Uh, that will be scheduled for August 22nd here at the agenda at the uh, Board of Supervisors Chambers. And uh, have a great summer and stay cool. Thank you. Yep. I guess it's two minutes, I'm sorry, it's four minutes till six and we're going to adjourn. <laughs>